I had a really good afternoon today on Twitter and there were several discussions happening, which were really cool and I want to thank you everyone who contributed. It started with me saying that I'm not switching to Elixir now, I will wait for the legacy applications to appear because that's inevitable. And overall my what I mean what I mean here is that I don't want to really to spend so much time learning new languages for their syntax. I really uh, understand that the platforms are much different and you know the whole perspective is much better once you learn it and uh, I think I understand how Erlang works and, and Elixir but overall I think the, the problem with, um, with big applications which I'm mo most interested in is not about the syntax, it's not even in the platform itself, it's about how we architecture those applications. So that's the, like, the background here. And I was making some jokes like money-wise uh, it's a good idea to follow Ruby people wherever they go and fix legacy apps afterwards. Overall, it's it's I think it's it it works for all programming languages. So I could also follow Java people or PHP people. It doesn't matter. The legacy apps part I think is is really interesting here. So uh, if was there any feedback here? Like I've had several retweets in February's. And yeah, someone said that uh, it's interesting to observe Ruby people adopting new languages and I, I'm doing that, I'm watching, like I'm not very close to Rust for example, but I have some friends who go to Elixir, Haskell, and I find it also interesting. But I'm also, again, I'm not really against Elixir, I'm, I'm really, uh, I don't like playing with new things, I played with Elixir, I played with Haskell, I, from all those like new kind of languages I, I choose Clojure to be my best fit. But I'm not switching professionally to them. That's probably one of the differences here. Uh, so yeah, it's interesting to watch. I think Elixir is, is winning somehow because the culture fit is similar. Maybe because Joseph Alim was a, was a Ruby person for some time. So, uh, so he helped to create a similar culture, which is interesting. Mm. So I, I also, also find it interesting that more and more logic is, is going into the front end. Mm, part of the applications and those new languages that we get so excited about they're not really supporting those uh, frontends uh, I know they some of them do like closure scripts but or Elm but it's not like mainstream at all or probably not so not, not everything is ready um, yeah okay so what kind of other topics we've had here like what's the biggest motivation to go from Ruby to Elixir uh, I don't see like I, I'm very experiences in looking at legacy Ruby applications, Rails applications, and although I know that the platform is really bad, we, as compared to Java, .NET, other platforms, or, or Elix or Erlang platform, but it's, it's, much, it's much worse, but it's not the biggest problem at all, I think. Uh, not every application needs like huge mm, traffic, not every successful application needs really great uh, concurrency model. They, they all help a lot, but I don't see this as the biggest problem. Uh, so maybe this will help understand my, my point of view. There is definitely some kind of shiny ball syndrome here, uh, but I'm not saying that everyone's doing that because of... So I see like two kinds of, two groups of people switching to, to Elixir. One is very experienced people, Ruby people, like, I don't know, Solnitz, for example. Uh, they are doing it very consciously with a full understanding of everything. And this is the kind of attitude that I admire and I respect. Uh, but I want to put a different point of view as well to people who are not so that not don't have really so much of good understanding of you know those little differences and the small details that uh, that you know that make really the difference between Ruby and Elixir. All right, what else? And then I tweeted this. Okay, five retreats, four favorites. Uh, the biggest problem of Ruby is that we all write shitty code, and and I, I believe in that, and that that's my observation. That's what comes from my, from me reviewing hundreds of Rails applications, and Ruby applications. Is that, is the problem is at the code level and at the architecture level, and the platform doesn't help. Uh, there was and is JRuby, but we are not switching to it. One of the reasons we are not switching to, to JRuby is because it's a different platform and I wouldn't underestimate this problem of a different platform. Like, whole thing, how we deploy applications, how we monitor them. I do believe they are better in those regards, but there's a whole lot of things you need to learn now. And it's probably worth the time, 
but if you prioritize your learning like is it the thing that will move you the most in your career or in your skills or in your I don't know, CV mm, yeah so someone replies that it's too easy to write shit in Ruby and that was the argument as well when we were switching from Java I, I'm old enough to, to remember that time uh, from Java because Java was too limiting and overall I, th I think I want to have less limitations and also I uh, I think that many of the people who switch they are actually doing very good job at writing Ruby code themselves they see uh, that's, that's my hypothesis is that many people see problems with other people code and by changing languages they hope to see this, those problems disappear while it happens with every language no matter how great is the language that once you have those the, once there are only early adopters you will have a really nice code bases like even we've had this situation with Rails in 2005-2006 we've had only early adopters from other languages people who were confident and people who are conscious what they are doing while when, once you have this reach of mainstream you will see new people you will see people with different understanding of all this good quality code and you will see this problem again so I don't so it's a, just a temporary escape that when you switch languages you may see some better quality code and I don't fee, see this very valuable to me to my career that I will just escape from the mainstream all the time and I think that's my that's my part of what you are seeing here yeah so there is a quote from uh, uh, from from Dijkstra which this quote actually never happened it's a it's a myth mm. Yeah, I agree that OOP and FP is a bad categorization. And to be honest, I don't see where exactly is the difference. Like, if I go uh, event sourcing plus secure plus TDD, this is really very good OOP, but I think it's also very good FP. So I, I'm not seeing this difference. And even if I'm, if, if someone else sees, I don't think all in all those debates we have the same understanding of the terminology here. Yeah, so that's a joke again. Uh, People in my Ruby team mutated some objects, I will switch to Elixir so they can't. Yeah, so I believe this is, might be one of the reasons and I don't think that's a good reason, that's a good rational reason. Yes, and now now, now the interesting part is that uh, I do believe that freedom is important for languages, but I also believe that it requires responsibility and discipline. And it's now up to us whether we have it. And we could either be like, I want to escape from those irresponsible people and switch languages, or we can try and educate them, or we can just accept that some people are will be writing worse code than us, and this, this will happen. So I think this is a problem at the people level, not at the technical level. So it's up to you to choose the team to work with, it's up to you to choose the customer to work with, or if you run, you run your own business, your own product, it's up to you how you decide when to ship features and so on. So I don't think you can easily like improve the situation in long term uh, just by going to a different language. So we need this discipline and this is I think quite an interesting part. Like I said I do Ruby because I want freedom and choice and like and what choice do we have? So I know that my response is very provocative maybe uh, but I think this is very important that we have this choice. I want to be able to mutate even though I agree that mutating the state is very often almost always a bad idea but sometimes you want to hotfix sometimes you want to do a thing that given your current like production emergency situation you want you only know how to do it by mutation and not by making the elegant solution right now and sometimes even this idea for hot fixing is important later on you will do the cold fix and you will fix the problem the best way you can but sometimes it's a matter of minutes and sometimes you want to be able to to break all the rules, basically. And yeah, Yuri had, had a good point uh, that we need mm, good tools when we have a language that, that's, uh, that gives you a lot of freedom and Ruby is still at the level that we debate Vim and Emacs. And I'm not against Vim and Emacs. They, many people, I know many people who are like more fluent in those tools than I am with RubyMine, but I do my best to promote RubyMine. And I think it's, it's a lot about education. So I admire the work by Solonis, for example, who educated a big part of the Ruby community how to write better Ruby code I also try to do my part of it and I believe this is the way to go for me at this moment 
and uh, this is probably one of the reasons why I'm not switching to Elixir, at least not yet. Uh, so I hope you had a good um, time with those Twitter, <laughs> Twitter conversations as well. If you, if you want to contribute, just tweet me or comment on this YouTube. And thank you a lot.